Hey, my friends, I've got a beautiful story to share with you today. Do you remember Bentley and Egg when I read that about uh, the frog who saved the egg? You read it around Easter Unite. It's by the same author. His name is William Joyce, and he is a Louisiana native, which is so fun. I like to read things or check out books that have been written by people from around here. So this is called The Man in the Moon by William Joyce. Um, I hope you agree with me that these are some of the most beautiful pictures you'll see. So let's get started on this. The Man in the Moon by William Joyce. I mean, even look at the lions. They're so beautifully painted. The Man in the Moon by William Joyce. Of course you know of the guardians of childhood. You've known them since before you can remember, and you'll know them till your memories are like twilight. Santa Claus, the Tooth Fairy, the Sandman, the Easter Bunny, and the others. But the very first one was the Man in the Moon. Many once upon a time ago, the Man in the Moon began his journey. It was during the Golden Age, a glorious time of hope and happiness and dreams that could come true. As a baby, the man in the moon had everything a child could need. His father showed him the wonders of the heavens through his telescope, while the moonbot crew whistled a jolly toot toot to every passing ship. By the light of the giant glowworms, his mother read to him from her primer of planets, as the moon mice hushed one another so they could listen too. And he had a devoted little friend named Nightlight to watch over him. Together, they all sailed from one peaceful planet to another, in their beautiful ship, the Moon Flipper. At night, the Moon Flipper was designed to turn into a moon. So Nightlight called the baby the Little Man in the Moon, or Nim for short. So look, it starts out like that. And do you see how it goes through all of these stages? Pop to end up like the moon. Now, Nightlight never slept, and every night he sprinkled, sprinkled dream sand over Mim and sang him a lullaby. Night light, bright light, sweet dreams I bestow. Sleep tight, sleep all night, forever I will glow. And as long as Nightlight watched over him, Mim was safe from nightmares. But darkness came to the Golden Age. It came in the shifting shape of pitch. He had heard of the boy who had never had a nightmare, and this he could not abide. So he vowed to make that boy his own, a prince of nightmares. In search of men, Pitch sailed in his nightmare galleon on waves of fear, plundering planets, extinguishing stars, and scuttling every airship that crossed his path. Mim's parents knew the perfect place to hide an uncharted little green and blue planet, planet in a distant galaxy. It was called Earth, and it had no moon. The moon clipper glided in deepest silence, speeding away from Pitch's darkness. Suddenly, out of the gloom, the nightmare galleon appeared. So close, Mim could see Pitch standing on the bow. Toot toot, asked the baby. Where is that Owen so innocent child who has never had a nightmare? Pitch demanded, glaring straight at Mim. Then he signaled the attack. Mim's parents commanded Nightlight to take the baby to a hidden nursery deep in the darkest tunnels of the ship. But first you must kneel and take this oath, they said. Their voices rang out through the smoldering smoke of flame. Watch over our child, guide him safely from the ways of harm. Keep happy his heart, brave his soul, and rosy his cheeks. Guard with your life his hopes and dreams, for he is all that we have, all that we are, and all that we will ever be. The battle rocked the moon clipper as nightlight rushed Mim to safety. Seeing a tear on the frightened child's cheek, he took it and held it close to his heart. Fiercely he repeated his oath. Then he felt a searing pain. When he opened his hand, the tear had changed into a brilliant diamond sharp as a dagger. Remember me in dreams, he whispered to Mim as he flickered away to face Pitch. The 
galaxies have never known such a battle. Min's parents and their crew fought valiantly, but they were overwhelmed at last. Min's parents were captured, and all seemed lost. Nightlight knew what he must do. Whatever the cost, Min must not become the Prince of Nightmares. With the diamond dagger held aloft, Nim flew bravely forward. He aimed the weapon at the pitch's heart. There was a blinding flash, but a great explosion. Yikes. Look at that. The poor moonlight that blinded. <clears throat> when all was still, Nim crawled to the surface. Too soon, he whispered, but his parents didn't answer. He looked around him. Pitch and his galleon had vanished. The beautiful hull of the moon clipper had been blasted away. It was now just a moon that would never sail again. Two, he called once more and listened. Again, no answer came. Finally, he looked up at the sky. He saw a group of new stars shimmering above him. He stared at them until he was sure. His mother and father were there, far away. But what of noble little light light? The baby glimpsed a shooting star as bright as dream sand as it fell to the earth. <clears throat> Slowly the remaining moonbots, moonbites, and giant glowworms surrounded Nim. The only words he knew were toot toot, so he said them over and over again. Gently they lifted Nim up and carried him into the tunnels of the moon. The baby looked up at the sky and waved, gazing longingly constellations. Now he truly was Mim, the little man in the moon. Mim's new life had many comforts. Every night, one of the lunar moths would circle the moon with Mim on its soft, woolly back. He'd stay awake long enough to see his parents' constellations. Then he'd sleep and dream of nightlight. As time passed, the moon became a planet-sized playground for the boy. There was so little gravity that with one hop, he could bounce over the tallest mountain. After a long day of adventuring, dinners were always a treat. Look, he went right over there. Lunar ice cream, comet surprise, space juice nectarine. And each meal was lit by schools of starfish that swam through the evening sky. As young Mim wandered through the moon's tunnels, he discovered the primer his mother had used to read to him. In the book was something he'd completely forgotten, the little green and blue planet. He ran to his father's telescope. As he peered into it, he remembered the long ago shooting star that had fallen to Earth. But it was not nightlight he found. There are children on Earth, children like me, he cried. Years went by, and the man in the moon was no longer a little boy. His new friends on Earth were very far away, but their lost balloons often floated up to the moon. Min found that he held them to his ear. He could hear the hopes and dreams of the children who had lost them. He listened carefully. Soon, he had a whole collection of lost balloons. Min learned that sometimes, the children just needed a toy or a candy or a surprise to, or a sweet dream or a good story to cheer them up. So, Nim gazed down upon the earth, scanning mountaintops so remote they were hidden in clouds. There, he found a grand toy maker to make the children toys, a regal rabbit to make them candy eggs, and a fairy from the kingdom of Punjum Hailu to leave presents, prizes under their pillows. <clears throat> He even found a sleepy little fellow on a faraway sandy island who seemed to know all there was to know about dreams. And lastly, Mim brought the children of Earth, a lovely lady who would tell them stories. So let's see what this is. Tooth Fairy, the Easter Bunny, Santa, Mother Goose, the Sandman. Wow. But for all the joy Mim brought to Earth, there was one thing he had not been able to change. The children were still afraid of the dark. Although Pitch and his nightmare men were nowhere to be seen, Nim knew that the children still had nightmares. 
After all this time, he had never had one himself. Nim thought he would know everything when he grew up, but of course he did not. This growing up is a tricky business, he said to himself. Every day he listened to the lost balloon and watched the children through his telescope and wondered how he could help them. If only I could find them a friend like Nightlight, he thought. And so, deep in thought and remembering his friend, Nim kicked a rock and then another revealing a pile of very bright sand. He stopped and stared. It reminded him of the dream sand that Nightlight had sprinkled over him when he was a baby. Nim laughed to himself and went on kicking rocks. He had an idea. Soon the moobots and moon mice were kicking rocks too. And the moon mice were so tired that they could hardly hold up their tails and the moon bots were so creaky that they could barely move. Nim called upon the toy maker and the rabbit, the fairy and the others from Earth, to fly up and lend a hand. And then finally, when everyone was too tired even to complain, the man in the moon smiled and summoned the lunar moth. The bright sand had made the moon 100 times brighter. Now the children of Earth will see the moon's smiling face and know they have a nightlight to guard them forever, said Nim. And for a moment, the distant stars of his mother and father sparkled more brightly than ever. Nim began to sing. It was an old song, a beloved song, and they all joined in. Night light, bright light, sweet dreams I bestow. Sleep tight all night, forever I will glow. The man in the moon knew then that he could be a guardian of the children of Earth, just as Nightlight had been his guardian long ago. But he would need help. And so he gathered everyone together. Now, my friends, he said, kneel and take this oath. It was much like the one Nightlight had taken long ago, and now it would be their own. We will watch over the children of Earth, keep them safely from the ways of harm. Keep happy their hearts, brave their souls, and rosy their cheeks. We will guard with our lives their hopes and dreams, for they are all that we have, all that we are, and all that we will ever be. So began the guardian of childhood. And for the children of Earth, the night was never again as dark. Oh my gosh, isn't that beautiful? This is that dark side of the moon, you know, the one that we never really see. Isn't it so cool? All right, my friends, did you hear when they mentioned constellations? I know now that you know what that was. What a pretty book. Hope you enjoy it.